Um, the most serious of the Academic Freedom Acts is Louisiana's, which did pass. In March 2008, a Louisiana state senator, Ben Nevers, introduced SB 561, the Louisiana Academic Freedom Act. This was modeled on a 2006 policy that had been used in Washita County, which had been promoted by the Louisiana Family Forum, which is a religious right group. The Washita Parish policy, again, was one of these strengths and weaknesses kind of uh, uh, policies, but it permitted uh, teachers to help students understand, analyze, critique, and review in an objective manner the strengths and weaknesses of existing scientific theories. What was interesting about the Washita County policy is that it added, besides evolution and origin of life, it tucked on global warming and human cloning, which are usually not topics taught in high school biology. Actually, origin of life is hardly ever taught in high school biology, but these are all topics that are of great interest to the religious right. The Nevers 2008 bill was proposed, uh, and had it passed, it would have been bad indeed. It would uh, protect teachers who wanted to teach the strengths and weaknesses. It was couched in terms of critical thinking. Everybody's in favor of critical thinking, right? And it also protected uh, teachers if they wanted to bring in supplemental materials to the regular textbook, which was something that the Discovery Institute found very attractive and obviously pushed because they happened to have published a book, Explore Evolution, Explode Evolution is more like, um, which presents the weaknesses of evolution. Uh, we have a, an analysis of this on our website, and so you can find out what's wrong with it in great detail. That's what we do. Well, as it happens, uh, the original Nevers bill didn't pass, and the bill that did pass was uh, renamed the Louisiana Science Education Act. Probably they didn't want it to sound like an Alabama bill, uh, but it is still problematic. Uh, they, a lot of the really bad things of the original act were taken out, although those still are the intent of the act. The way the bill finally read is that the teacher should foster an environment within public elementary and secondary schools that promotes critical thinking skills, logical analysis, and open and objective discussion of scientific theories. Who wouldn't, right? Including evolution, the origins of life, global warning, and human cloning. You know, the, the fact that these uh, these scientific explanations are singled out. Of course, sort of puts a big flashing neon light on them, of course. Uh, also, in the um, bill that was passed, the um, uh, teachers were given authority to bring in supplemental materials with very little oversight. Guess who wants that? Um, <laughs> There was a procedure uh, that was vaguely referred to in the law as to how uh, a parent could bring a complaint. So like if you're in Louisiana and somebody bring, your teacher starts teaching from this book, you can complain about it, but the process that you have to go through is so labyrinthian. And the deck is stacked against you because the committee that's appointed includes the publisher and includes, yeah, it's not a very good system. No. This is for the true creation and evolution geeks in this audience. This is the, this is the phylogeny of academic <laughs> freedom acts. This, this was drawn up by my colleague Anton Mates, a wonderful young man who's just gone off to graduate school in Washington, and I'm sure he'll be a fine scientist. But he actually did this, did this marvelous, marvelous uh, phylogeny reading all of the bills and, and making a timeline and figuring out what was influenced by what. So I just have to go over this with you because it's so much fun. Geek out, you guys. <laughs> the left-hand side of this um, uh, phylogeny originated with the original Alabama bill. And this deals with the rights of students and teachers. It involves the legal protection of teachers and the idea of alternative theories. Now. The Alabama bill was critiqued by this, the Discovery Institute, which of course is the intelligent design think tank up in, Washington, uh, uh, in Seattle, Washington. And later versions of the bill dropped reference to alternative theories and replaced it with the full range of scientific views. Now, that is a phrase from the Santorum Amendment to the No Child Left Behind Act. And you can think, you can sort of hear why this is better linguistics. Alternative views might make somebody think of creationism. There's nobody here but us 
but as uh, scientists and teachers, right? We certainly don't want creationism to be taught, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Full range of scientific views doesn't sound as much like we're proposing creationism, but of course, the full range of scientific views includes the alternative theories, right? So this is, this is a way of trying to duck some of the legal challenges that will doubtless be applied to these, um, to these uh, laws at, at some point. Um, the tree on the right represents another strain of academic freedom acts, this time arising from the Washita Parish um, critical analysis, strengths and weaknesses. It also is a permissive policy but it tacks on these other religious right uh, enthusiasms like global warming, origin of life, cloning, and so forth. Um, a little bit later on, the provision was added that administrators cannot censor materials, which of course was something encouraged by the uh, intelligent design promoters because they had this nice handy dandy book that they could sell a lot of copies for. Uh, and they also put in the obligatory, oh, but this is not to promote religion. And bundling evolution with other religious right enthusiasms, uh, such as global warming, is part of the parcel. Now, we have here a little horizontal gene transfer uh, between these two. <laughs> As you can perhaps uh, imagine, these, these don't occur in a, in a vacuum. And we are likely to see uh, more evolution of this type in the future. Stay tuned, because there will be a new legislative season beginning in January. And we'll, we'll be adding to this tree, I'm sure. The summary of the Evidence Against Evolution or Academic Freedom Act approach includes the fact that they assiduously try, sorry, assiduously try to avoid any overt mention of religion whatsoever. You noticed in the bills that I was quoting to you, there was no effort whatsoever to um, mention God, mention creationism. They, they are getting better and better at whitewashing the uh, overt religiosity out of their position. The stress is on academic freedom, on free speech, rather than on free exercise, the other First Amendment um, a clause. Uh, and everybody's in favor of academic freedom, right? Who isn't? Raise your hand if you're against academic freedom. You know, it's not going to happen. Um, they also are protective bills, which is very clever. Um, they, they will protect a teacher who wants to teach alternatives or evidence against evolution, something like that. Again, the get out of jail free card. And perhaps the most interesting thing about these bills is that they are permissive rather than directive. Rather than like the Dover policy where uh, the teachers were told in Dover, Pennsylvania, you will teach A, B, and C, this says you can teach A, B, and C. The reason why that's clever has to do with the legal system. We could go to the judge in Dover and say, we want an injunction because this policy requiring the teaching of this bad stuff is going to cause harm. And you know, the, you have a chance of getting one. If you go to a judge with one of these permissive policies, it's harder to get an injunction. It's harder to challenge the bill on its face. Okay? A facial challenge is much more difficult. The judge is much more likely to say something like, well, you know, nobody's really done it yet. You know, let's just see what happens. Let's see how it plays out. What the lawyers call an as-applied challenge. That's a lot harder. If you can make a facial challenge like we did in, in Dover, you can find your plaintiffs. The plaintiffs have, have a much easier time of, of uh, establishing the standing to sue. With an as-applied challenge, you've actually got to go out there and find the teacher who's stepping over the line. You've got to find that teacher and then find somebody in that classroom or who would be taking the class the next year who has standing, who is willing. Uh, it, it's, it, the barriers I just raised much, much higher. It's a very clever uh, way of trying to duck uh, some of the legal problems that they have had in the past. Finally, they avoid singling out evolution by embedding evolution with other topics like global warming and so forth. Because in an earlier case, Epperson versus Arkansas, the Supreme Court said, hey, you know, when you single out evolution like that, you are ipso facto, prima facie, and whatever other Latin phrases you want to whip out. <laughs> you are just saying, we're being religious, because it's, you know, why just single out evolution from all other things? Well, evolution is the one sub subject in the curriculum that causes problems for people's religion. So they embed evolution with global warming and some of these other enthusiasms as a way of trying to work around Epperson. 
So the, the legal strategy is getting much, much clearer.